I'm the, currently the president of Meharry Medical College. I'm also a professor of internal medicine. And for the last 32 years, I've been doing research on HIV. And my focus is to understand how the virus escapes the immune system. And a lot of my work has been focused on how to empower women in underdeveloped countries to protect themselves against the virus. A story was published today said that a second patient, which I guess they're calling London patient, uh -huh. is in remission from HIV-1. So could yes. you talk to us about what this remission means and how exactly they were able to do it? Sure. So what was published is a second patient who was cured, and we have to put that in parentheses because it's still early days, but you might recall that a young man named Timothy Ray Brown back in the early 2000s was diagnosed with HIV. They successfully controlled his virus by putting him on a regimen of a cocktail of antiretrovirals. But then he developed leukemia. And to treat his leukemia, the oncologist did something very, very interesting. They found a donor for him for the bone marrow. And the donor lacks the receptor to allow HIV to infect their cells. So when you give the bone marrow from the resistant person to Mr. Brown, when his immune system became reconstituted, it was HIV free. Because even though he might have had some residual viruses in his system, they could not infect his immune system because now his immune system is resistant to HIV. And he is more than a decade free of HIV, so we can, I think, pretty confidently say that he was cured. The patient that was recently reported is exactly the same scenario an HIV positive individual who develops some form of cancer. We destroy his bone marrow. We totally wipe out his immune system. We're gonna restore his immune system by giving him bone marrow from a person who's resistant to HIV. And so the second patient validates the result of the first, but it's really the same approach to treatment and cure that was taken. It's clearly very exciting that these two individuals have essentially been cured of their virus. But unfortunately, this approach cannot be taken on a wider scale because, number one, the individuals who have this mutation in their HIV receptor, they're all of Caucasian, European descent, and it's only a small percentage of the total population. And as you know, for a bone marrow transplant, we have to match the bone marrow of the donor to the recipient. And it's highly unlikely that a black person or a person of African descent could accept a bone marrow donated from a person of Eastern European or European descent because it wouldn't be a match. So unfortunately, we cannot apply this on a wide scale because it's not going to be likely to find a donor with a mutation that matches the HIV positive persons who are mostly African descent. But it does give us an approach to treat HIV whereby we use gene editing technology, CRISPR, to edit the gene for the receptor to destroy it and then give the bone marrow back to those individuals. And that's exactly what the Chinese researcher did who got into trouble by gene editing the genome of the babies that he was treating. Do you think it's possible that they will allow the gene editing? It's, it's, it's really, really uh, honestly too early to know that we can apply this on a wide scale because in, in genetics and genomics there's something called downstream effects. The, Genomes are highly interconnected and genes, one gene can control multiple other genes and one uh, gene can, you know, repress other genes. So when we go in and start editing the genome without knowing the downstream effects, it's a really a dangerous thing to do. So it's going to be a long time, I think, before we can do this on a routine basis. The other way that we can cure HIV is to flush out all those viruses that are hiding in our genome and kill them. Um, and that's what a lot of researchers are trying to figure out how to do. How to make the reservoirs uncover themselves so that those viruses can be destroyed. There's a lot of rumination on social media about the holistic doctor, Dr. Sebi, and this idea that he cured HIV and AIDS by using herbs, spices, and a vegan diet. How accurate is that? Uh, with all due respect to this, this, this person, it's highly unlikely that nutrition and diet alone could cure anyone of HIV for the very reason I just shared with you. I'm just saying it's really, really challenging to believe that that can happen just by changing the diet uh, alone. Um, I am part of a, some research 
by some investigators in Africa that have identified some plants that can control the virus. But controlling and curing are two very different things. And if we're talking about a technical cure, that is ridding a person of the virus, that's going to be hard to do without a genetic or chemical intervention. I just think that since we don't hear cases in the media anymore of people dying in this country of AIDS per se, although people still are, uh, I think there's been a, a relaxation of precautions on, on the part of some people. They need to know that HIV is still out there. It is still causing uh, a great deal of, of morbidity and disease among our people. But especially if you're a young man, minority individual, Hispanic or black, and you're having sex with men, other men, you need to protect yourself. It's it's because the lifetime risk of getting infected in that case is 50%, one in two. And that that is an extraordinarily high risk of getting infected. So we just need people to protect themselves.